Okay, today we're going to be going over the uh, design and the build of the cooling interface. Uh, the cooling interface is nothing more than a uh, cooling jacket that uses water to keep the heat brakes cool. And today we're going to be going over the design, the tools required, the specific techniques we're going to be using uh, to machine this, and we're going to step through the machining process. Alright, so this is a 3D model of our cooling interface and, and this is the model that we use to uh, create our two-dimensional drawing uh, that calls out the features, locations and the critical elements of the cooling interface that we need to make sure that we machine into our 6061 aluminum block. Um, this is the two-dimension drawing and like I said it just pretty much calls out all the features, the locations and uh, critical things are important um, to make sure we get right when we machine this thing into our 6061 aluminum block. Alright, so here's some of the tools we're going to be using to machine this thing. And what we have is we have an optical transfer punch set. We have some Dicom layout ink, a Sharpie, ball peen hammer, tap handle, drill bit, taps, center drill, chamfering tool, uh, dial calipers, uh, we're going to be going over the use of the optical transfer punch. Uh, that's a really important tool and uh, we'll go over its use and its function here in a few minutes. Alright, so here we have our drill press, our machine vise. It's good to have a good machine vise. Uh, chip brush, uh, some WD-40 we're going to be using as cutting fluid. Alright, this is a cutoff saw. Uh, you don't really need a cutoff saw. You can use a hacksaw or anything, but this is what I have in my shop, and um, it makes it pretty easy to cut. It makes a nice straight line, so that's what we're going to use. All right, so here's Grace. Uh, she's basically scribing a line on the stock that shows where we're going to be cutting it off. And right here is our cutoff saw uh, doing the work, and it just takes a couple minutes. This thing will be cut off. Here's Emerson and Grace. They're basically um, using the layout ink. They're painting it on all the sides that we will be machining. And um, then after we get done uh, painting it on, we, we will uh, allow it to dry properly. And then um, we will uh, scribe lines uh, on the block, uh, dictating the location of the features that we want to put on there. Okay, so this is an optical transfer punch set, and as you can see, it's got three main components. Uh, the first one is the transfer punches, uh, the second one is the alignment fixture, and the third one is the acrylic lenses. And this is a really important tool. It allows you to very precisely locate features that you're going to be machining. And the acrylic lenses basically have targets in them that allows you to line up the center of uh, each hole on your mark and then it allows you to transfer punch exactly in the center of that. So I'm going to be showing you guys how that works and uh, that'll come up in just a minute. Alright so here we have our block and uh, I'm just going to scribe the lines on there exactly where we need to go. Show you make a precise line. Once, once I get the lines on there uh, exactly where I want the feature to be put I can get the uh, the alignment fixture, get it on there, and you'll see in just a second how we align it. I use the acrylic lens; it's got a target in there, and I just align the target uh, with the lines, and it centers up that transfer punch. So here, here we have how it looks, and so the two black crosshairs there, I'll center them up on the two scribed lines. All right, so once I have the um, the alignment done and I'm ready to make the transfer punch. I ensure the alignment is correct. I take the acrylic lens out. I put the uh, transfer punch in and um, whack it with the hammer really good, keeping alignment straight. And um, now we're ready to uh, double check it. And when I double check it, I just make sure that the center of the hole from the transfer punch is where the crosshairs are. And here we have a layout of um, center punch, uh, a couple of scribed lines, give, gives you an example. So this just gives you an example of one of the center punched holes uh, that we have on this block uh, as the girls are machining it. 
All right, here's Grace and Emerson. Uh, they're beginning the machining process, and they're pilot drilling right now. Uh, they're going to use a technique called peck drilling, and uh, that's just meant to clear all the chips. Uh, that's really important. So once they get done with the pilot drill, then they'll, they're going to step up to their finish hole size drill and uh, drill it through. All right, we're going to speed the video up a little bit, but I'm going to take you through the process here so you can see what we're doing. All right, the girls have stepped up a drill size, and this is the finished drill size before we go to the uh, 1 8 inch NPT tap. So they're going to drill uh, two of these holes, and then we'll be ready to turn the block over. Well, it's possible that. Well, let's let's just drill bits. I think I checked it pretty good, but that's number two. But that's the right drill bit. All right, so right here, Grace is gonna drill the uh, finish hole size for the through hole where the uh, water is going to be coming in, and we'll just we'll tap. Once this hole is drilled, uh, you'll see us, we'll tap the top of it with an eighth inch NPT tap that allows us to uh, put the push connect fitting in there.
All right, so what I've done here is I've just uh, chucked the tap handle in the drill press. Uh, chuck, that way I can make sure the alignment stays straight and uh, the hole goes in there straight. So this are the two uh, NPT, 1 8 NPT holes that's going to be used for some push connect fittings uh, in the water jacket. This is where the water is going to be flowing through in these two uh, holes. Alright, so we're going to be installing a pipe plug in this hole on the top, and that just prevents water from flowing out everywhere. So it's, it's just going to be a pipe plug that goes in there, and it's going to go right in between uh, the two push to connect fittings that's going to allow the uh, filament into the uh, cooling interface. Alright, so what I'm doing right here is I'm actually uh, drilling the holes for the uh, 1032 tap. Uh, threads and and these basically are just going to be used uh, for some set screws uh, that go in here and uh, pretty much just holds the uh, holds the heat breaks in place inside the cooling jacket. Now these holes are going to be used to attach the uh, cooling interface. Uh, to a bracket that then connects it to the x-axis of the 3D printer and uh, so there's going to be four of these two on each side. So it's time to start tapping the 1032 threads. As you can see, I'm using the tap guide there. And it basically just ensures that the uh, tap goes in perpendicular to the surface and uh, keeps that, those threads nice and straight. I've just flipped the block over and I'm getting ready to tap the, uh, the 1032 threads on the other side that will be used to uh, connect the uh, cooling interface to the bracket. Here we have the finished product. Um, we're going to set this aside now. We're going to start machining the uh, actual hot end blocks and the heat brakes and a few other things. And then we're going to go for a final assembly and, of course, test. So I uh, hope you stick around and see all the videos and see the test video.